In today's video, we're going to be talking about how you can start making some more money online. Today's video is going to be focused on different tips and tricks that you should be implementing into your dropshipping business to start making some more profits. So if you've been struggling to make some money online, then make sure to check out this video all the way to the end because some of these tips and tricks can really help you start to bring up your business a little bit more and start making some more money. Let's go ahead and run that intro first and let's get started. What's going on everyone, Mario here with AutoDS. And if you like tips and tricks on the dropshipping business and finding out new ways to start bringing in some more money, then make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. Now, before we get started, I do wanna quickly mention that if you want any more detail on anything that I'm gonna be covering in this video, just go ahead and check out the description down below. I'm gonna have a link to a relevant article down there. Also, I'm gonna have an easy to reference cheat sheet that I'm making to go along with this video. So if you want access to that, all you have to do is go ahead and comment down below, hashtag make money plus your take away from this video and I'll answer back with a link to the sheet. Now, for those of you that are new here and just starting out in the online e-commerce world, then let's go over quickly what exactly is dropshipping. And it's actually fairly simple. All dropshipping is, is a fulfillment business model. What does that mean? It means just that all you're doing really is fulfilling an order. So let's take, for example, you're selling shoes online, right? And you have your online store where you sell these shoes for $150. Somebody's going to come to your store, place the order for those $150 shoes. And on their part, on the customer's part, it's pretty much it. Now it's up to you to start fulfilling that order. Now what comes next is you're going to take that order. Then you're going to go to the supplier and place the order for those same exact pair of shoes. But instead of paying $150, you're going to be paying maybe $75 or $100, something along those lines. Now your supplier is going to take that order and they're going to go ahead and look for those pairs of shoes and then ship them to the address that you're provided. But instead of you providing your own address, you're going to provide customer's address. So the supplier is going to ship those shoes directly to your customer. Now the extra $50 or $75 that you have is yours to keep. That's your profit. Now there are a couple of extra steps. So whenever your supplier ships the item and then sends you the tracking number, then it's your responsibility to go ahead and update your customer with that same tracking number. Also, if there are any extra inquiries, let's say maybe your customer has a question about the order or if they even want to return the order, then they're going to go ahead and message you. They're going to email you through your store, your email, whatever it is. In that case, remember, it's always extremely important to answer your customer's questions or concerns as quick as possible. So that way your customer can feel more comfortable making a future purchase. Now that sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Start an online store, list a couple items, make a few sales, make some money. That now begs the question, is it worth it? And can you actually make money doing this? Seeing as how easy it is, why isn't everyone doing it? Well, the short answer is yes, you can definitely make money doing this. And there are a lot of people actually doing it. The only thing is that a lot of them are probably doing it wrong, going about it the wrong way. They're listing any items. They're listing pretty much anything they can find, and they're not looking for reliable suppliers. And that's what sets apart the stores that actually make money versus the ones that don't. You want to start up a store that is quality, has good quality products, fast suppliers, unique items, and you want to get your marketing right. Now, if it sounded like it started to get a bit too complicated, don't you worry. Don't be scared about the entire process because it is in fact fairly easy. And over here at AutoDS, we have tons of playlists and resources to help make it that much easier for you. For one, we have our YouTube channel, this one that you're watching right now, that has over 65,000 subscribers finding value in all our content each and every day. We also have an entire blog section over at AutoDS.com focused on the same exact things. So we provide you with some of the best articles and videos regarding some of the best items to sell, whether it be by the season, by the niche, or even even by the month. We have tips and tricks to start building your store and scaling, different tips to better your marketing. So if you need help on any of this stuff, just make sure to check out our YouTube channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button or check out our blog over at autods.com. Now, without waiting any longer, let's go ahead and jump into the eight different steps to help kickstart your dropshipping business and start bringing in some more money. All right, so the first step that we need to start focusing on is product research. We need to find winning products that are currently trending so people can start purchasing them and we can start making some money. Now, doing proper product research can take a little bit of time, but these are some of the easiest ways that you can start to do it so you can easily start importing products. Now, one of the best and easiest ways to start finding these trending products is simply by going over to the platform over at platform.autods.com. Here we have a section called the winning product section. When you click into that, you're going to be prompted with all of these different products that have been proven to sell and are currently trending. If you start scrolling down, you're going to find a variety of products and you're going to get some information on them. So let's say here on this flying ball boomerang, right? You're going to see that the item cost is about $9.45. And if you want to get some more details on it, all you have to do is go ahead and click into it. Once we click into it, we're going to get tons of information. So for one here, you have all of the different pictures of the item itself. Then on this little drop down box, you're going to have all of the different variations. If you keep scrolling down a little bit, you're going to see that this particular item is being sold for about $31.98, which gives you a potential profit of $22.53. And if you're wondering how long it takes to ship, this particular item takes about 27 to 28 business days. But there's a bunch more products that you can check out that could have some quicker shipping. Aside from that, if we scroll down a little bit more, you're going to see that we have 
have an example Facebook ad. So this is how it's currently being marketed by a particular seller. Then if you go to the side, you're going to see the target audience. Now, this is a suggestion for the demographic that you should be targeting on Facebook if you're using Facebook ads. Once again, this is a suggestion. You can always tweak it by adding a few different interests. So that way you can target different demographics. But in this case, the example they're using is the gender is going to be for both male and female between the ages of 25 and 45. Marital status married. It could also be single either or with interests in family activities, outdoor recreation and toys and games. Now it can also get a bit more specific with their occupation. So it could be for working parents or stay at home parents. Now, right under that, you're also going to see an example website that sells the product. Under that, you're going to get some more information. So you're going to get some AutoDS insights. So that way you can get some more information on the product itself. But let's go ahead and quickly click on the link so we can see what the website looks like. So this is how the seller has their website structured. And you can see that it's actually pretty good. It's pretty clean. Everything flows fairly nicely. You have all of the different variations. And if you keep scrolling down, you have some more information and some suggested products that could go along nicely with this purchase. Also, as an added resource over at AutoDS.com, we have our product finding blogs on here. You can find tons of different blogs, whether it be related to finding the best products for a particular season or for the upcoming month or even based on a particular niche. You can find all of them on here. Remember that if you want access to all of these links, they're all going to be in the cheat sheet. And for access to the cheat sheet, all you have to do is go ahead and comment down below. Hashtag make money plus your takeaway from this video. And I'll reply back with a link so that way you can access it. And on top of those blog articles, we also have our YouTube channel playlist. Sell these now on here. You can find all of those articles in video version and a few extras. Another great way to start finding some winning products is if you already have a supplier of choice and you're looking at a particular item, check out their recommendations. So right now I'm looking at this microphone, for example, if I scroll down a little bit and I pass the comments, I'm going to see recommended from cute living store. These are all recommendations from the current supplier whose item you're looking at. Now, this next one is actually one of my personal favorites because it can tell you when to start selling a particular item or a particular niche. Google Trends can help you find trends as they're starting. So let's say the demand for a particular item is starting to pick up. You can look up that item on Google Trends and see how many people are currently searching for it. Is it worth to invest some time into marketing or selling that product? Or should you just forget about it and leave it for a different season or a different time when the hype is going to be there for people to start purchasing it? Now, Google Trends is extremely easy to use. Let me show you exactly how to take advantage of this super powerful tool. So first we have to go to trends.google.com. And right now it's about April. So in a few months, we're going to have summer. So let's start looking up some summer products, right? Let's see when is the best time to start selling summer products or advertising summer products. So once we're on the Google Trends website, we're just going to go ahead and look up summer products. Simple as that. Let's go ahead and hit explore. And we're going to get a graph with how many times the particular term has been searched in the past day. Now, that's not what we're looking for. We're actually looking for a trend. So at what time of the year are people searching this particular keyword? And in order to analyze that, we need to actually go back further than the past day and even further than the past year. So I'm going to go ahead and look at the past five years. Now, here you can see a few dips and a few rises. We want to catch this trend at the rise. So it starts to rise around the end of December, picking up some good traction throughout the year up until around mid June. So around mid June is when the searches start to decrease. So that's when you kind of want to ease off and probably focus on a different niche. But then you can see it starts to go back down and then it starts to get picked up again. Once again, at the end of December, beginning of January, it's going to go all the way up with a significant downtrend actually right here around once again, middle of June, then you're going to see it starts to dip and then it starts to rise once again towards the end of December, this time around the end of January. So the hype for this particular keyword, summer products is starting towards the end of December, beginning of January. So this is a time that you want to start making your dropshipping store based around this particular keyword. Now, this can also be done with other things. Let's look up fishing gear. When are people searching for fishing gear? So this shows us in the past five years, the trend is starting at about the end of October, beginning of November, and it goes all the way up and then starts to decrease a little bit. Then you can see it starts to trend all the way up again, and it starts trending around February to March. That's when this trend starts raising and then starts lowering once again to about October to November, where people are probably buying fishing gear as Christmas presents. And then you can see it starts to dip back down around the middle of March, and then it starts to rise again pretty much right before the summer and then starts to dip right at the peak of summer. So using this information, we can see that if we want to start selling something like fishing gear, we should start selling it either a few months before summer or a month or two before the holiday season. Don't skip on Google Trends because Google Trends is actually a super powerful tool that you can have for completely free. I didn't use it for that long before this, but once I realized how useful it is and how you can actually use it to your advantage, I started using it all the time. It's a very good, powerful and free tool. Another great tool by Google that you can use for absolutely free is Google Lens. Now, Google Lens, let's say you're looking through Amazon and you find a particular product and you think hmm, that looks pretty familiar. They're making some good money off it. I feel like I've seen it maybe on AliExpress or something. Maybe I saw it from one of my suppliers websites and then you start searching for it and maybe you can't find it. Now, what you can do with Google is super easy. All you have to do is go on over 
over to the listing itself or the image. Let's say this one, go ahead and right click. And then you're going to get an option that says search image with Google. Let's click on that. And then on the right hand side, you're going to see Google lens here. It's going to ask you what exactly you want to search for. So in this case, I want to search for this particular brush. So I'm looking for this image and then Google is going to search the web for similar images like the one that I'm searching pretty much the same way when you search for any search terms on Google. So if we're going to start scrolling down, you're going to see that you have a few on Amazon. There's a few on Walmart for about $27. You can see some more Amazon ones, but if you keep scrolling, you're eventually going to find a few different suppliers for the most part right now we're getting Amazon and Walmart, but notice how once we keep scrolling a little bit more, we're going to find an AliExpress listing. So from here, we can go ahead and click on that. And we can see that this item is actually selling for just about $11 and 49 cents with about $6 in shipping that equals out to roughly about $17, give or take my math is off. My math is really bad. And through there, you can see that you're actually getting it at a cheaper price than with Amazon. Now on Amazon, the price difference wasn't that big, so you could probably get quicker shipping using Amazon. But if you want to offer better prices, one of the things that you can do is go ahead and contact the suppliers, talk to them and tell them that you have a drop shipping business and you're interested in selling some of their products on your drop shipping store. Being in contact with your suppliers, a lot of times can be beneficial to you. They can probably offer you some quicker shipping, maybe even some extra type of branding where maybe they can insert a note, like a thank you card inside the products whenever they sell. So when choosing your products, always make sure to reach out to the supplier. It could be very beneficial to you and can ultimately help you make either a bit more profit or have some happier customers and some better customer service. Now, the last option I want to give you for your product research is just looking at social media, especially video websites like TikTok. On TikTok, I don't know if you've noticed, which you probably have, there's tons of products on there. There's people either using a product, showing how it works and not even telling you where to go buy it. They just show the product itself and in the description or in the link, they'll have where you can purchase it. A lot of these times, these videos end up going viral, especially if they're done right. And finding these videos as well as these products is pretty easy. All you have to do is go on, let's say TikTok and look for the hashtag TikTok made me buy it. Once you're on here and you start scrolling, you're going to see tons of products. Try looking for some that are unique and not oversaturated. So look for videos that have unique products that other videos don't have. Make sure that those videos also have some pretty good engagement and you got yourself a potential winning product. Now, if you have a huge list of products that you want to add to your store, but don't know which ones are the best ones to do, we have a product research spreadsheet for you that you can use for absolutely free to help you choose the best ones. This spreadsheet is super easy to use. You have a column for the product itself, the source, which is going to be the link to the product. And then it's going to ask you a few different questions regarding the product. If you answer yes to all of them, then it is definitely worth importing into your store and trying to sell it. If you want access to the spreadsheet, it's totally free. All you have to do is comment down below requesting the product research spreadsheet. Now, the second tip that I want to give you all is selecting the right suppliers. Selecting the right suppliers is absolutely crucial. You want to make sure that your suppliers have quality products, quality control and quick shipping. Another thing to look out for is make sure that you can communicate with them in an efficient way. A lot of the times these suppliers are going to be overseas, which can make communication a bit of a hassle, which also translates to your customer service with your customers. Remember that the faster and more efficient way you can communicate with your supplier, the easier it's going to be for you to get answers for any of your customers inquiries. A few things you want to look out for when selecting your suppliers for one is making sure that they have international warehouses. So make sure that their warehouses are located in the particular region that you're going to be selling in. Also make sure that they have a wide product range. Make sure they have tons of different products in different variations and that they have some fairly quick shipping times. You want to make sure that your customers are going to be receiving their items at least in less than a month. Always check out your suppliers reviews. Make sure to check out what people are saying about them. Make sure that they have good reviews overall, at least a four or four and a half out of five stars and that they have a good amount of sales to back up the claims and make sure that they have a good amount of reviews. I don't know, maybe at least 30 different reviews. So that way you can see what multiple people are saying about them. And last but definitely not least, one of the most important things to look out for in a supplier are their return policies. You want to make sure that your supplier accepts returns and that it's not much of a hassle. A lot of the times whenever there's a defective product, your supplier will in fact ask for something like images to prove that it's defective before they accept the return or issue an exchange or refund. Now, here are some of our supplier recommendations. All of these different suppliers have proven great customer service and some pretty good return policies. So to start off, we have none other than AutoDS. This is actually a fairly new feature. We now offer the AutoDS warehouse so you can use us as an actual supplier. Really quick, let's run over to the platform over at platform.autods.com and click on your marketplace. Once you're in marketplace, you're going to see the option to select your supplier. Once you click on that, you're going to be prompted with three different options, AutoDS, AliExpress and Amazon. Let's go ahead and select AutoDS and start scrolling. Here you're going to now see a few different options and a few different text prompts. So first you're going to see AutoDS suppliers with this 
discount prices. This means that these products are going to be shipping from the AutoDS warehouse and you're getting the best possible price with the quickest possible shipping. So as you can see, the shipping time is actually between six to nine business days. That's faster than most of the products you're going to get from most other suppliers. And this is from the time that the customer places their order. Now, aside from that, you're also going to see a few other options like this one, for example, that shows branding logo. This is a super cool feature because now you can brand your own items under your brand name using the AutoDS suppliers. Now, aside from AutoDS, we also have the ever popular AliExpress. On AliExpress, you're going to find tons of different niches as well as different products. AliExpress probably has one of the biggest product selections out there. On their website, it's also super easy to look through different niches and different products just by selecting the different filters that they have on here. So let's say I'm looking for a particular type of t-shirt for guys. I can just go under men's fashion and look up t-shirts. AliExpress also has the super handy dropship center. This is actually meant for dropshippers so you all can find some of the best selling products on the platform. So once you click on the dropship center, you're prompted with a few different filters so that way you can narrow down your search. Or if you keep scrolling, you're going to see some of the best sellers. Once you start looking at the different sellers and the different items, you're going to see their star rating along with how many have been sold. A few other really good suppliers include Walmart. On Walmart, you can find tons of different products at some pretty good prices. And you can always expect the best possible customer service from Walmart as well. And similar to AliExpress, we also have CJ dropshipping, which has some pretty good features in it as well, including a product sourcing option, which means if there's a particular product that you can't find on their platform that you found on another one, you can go ahead and request to have it added. Banggood is also another fantastic supplier to be able to source your products from along with Wayfair. Now, Wayfair is actually really good specifically for the furniture niche. So if you're looking to dropship either furniture or home goods, make sure to check out Wayfair. Now for our third tip, it might seem kind of obvious, but you need to create your own store. Not only that, but you want to make sure that the platform that you choose is right for the niche or the style that you're going for. Now for this, you have a couple of options. If you want to start your own dropshipping store with your own website, this would probably be best if you're looking to start a branded dropshipping store. So if you want to add your own brand or if you want to start your own brand, you might want to go with your own website for the simple fact that you can customize it however you want. Now for this, you have a few different options. You have Shopify, Wix, and WooCommerce. Those are the three big main platforms to set up your store on. Now having your own website can also mean having to do your own marketing. Since you are going to be selling on your own store, a lot of people aren't going to know that it even exists. So in this case, you're going to have to try different strategies and different techniques when it comes to your marketing. So you can try things like either paid Facebook ads, influencer marketing or social media marketing. There's different ways to be able to start driving traffic to your store, whether it be for free or paid. Now, if you don't wanna spend the time designing your own store or don't even care about bringing up your own brand, you can sell on a marketplace. These marketplaces can include eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and as of recently, we now support Etsy over at autods.com. Now, selling on a marketplace can really have its benefits. For one, you don't really have to market that much. There's already organic traffic going to those websites looking for particular items to sell. It's just your job at this point to make sure that you have the proper product pages and some high quality items. Now, the downside to selling on a marketplace is the potential for higher fees. So when it comes to a marketplace, for the most part, you're going to be paying fees based on the items that you sell. When it comes to having your own website, most of the fees are going to be coming in the form of either payment processing fees or monthly fees to be able to keep your website up, as well as the fees for marketing, which will vary on the choice of marketing that you prefer to go with. Now, for the fourth step, one of the most important things you need to do after you start making some sales and make sure that you have a legitimate business that's going to be continuously growing is is setting up your financial obligations. Now, this can mean a lot of things depending on where you're located or what region you're going to be drop shipping to. But for the most part, some of the more important things that you're going to have to set up are for one, your business registration. So you're going to want to make sure that you register your business as an actual business, whether it be a sole proprietorship, an LLC, a partnership, or whatever it is that you want to set it up as. Just make sure that you get your business registered with the proper authorities. On top of that, you also want to make sure that you abide by all of the different tax obligations. So depending on the region that you're going to be selling in is also going to depend the type of taxes that you have to file. And the last thing is going to be your financial accounts. Once you really start bringing in some money with your dropshipping business, it can be a bit complicated to differentiate the money that you're bringing in and what you need to spend for your business if you have it mixed in with your personal account. So when you start your business, you always want to make sure also that you have a separate bank account so you can keep track of everything that you spend as well as everything that you make. All right. So next up, we need to start importing all of the different trending products that we found back in step one. So after we figured out the different products that we want to sell, now it's actually time to start importing to our store so we can start making some sales. Now, there's a few different ways that we can do this. We can either manually import them. In this case, we're going to have to copy over the product title, the product description, save all of the different images and upload all of that to our store. On top of that, we also have to optimize our titles as well as descriptions. Remember that a lot of the times whenever we copy a description or a title directly from our supplier, it might not be the best and it might not be the easiest to understand. This is a lot of the times due because of the language barrier. Remember that, as I stated earlier, a lot of these suppliers are stationed overseas, so a few things can get 
lost in translation. Now, the method of manually importing your products works and it gets the job done, but it could be fairly lengthy, especially if you want to start importing multiple products. So let's say for one product, you can spend anywhere between five to 20 minutes, depending on the different steps you have to take. Sometimes saving the image might not be as easy as just a right click, while other times optimizing the title and descriptions can take a bit longer than you'd like it to. Now, because of this, when manually importing our products, we always want to expect anywhere between five to 20 minutes per product. Now you can see how one or two products can be okay, but when you really want to start importing maybe 10 or 15 products, it can really start to take a long time. In this case, one of the ways that we can optimize and streamline the entire process is by using automation. Now, when it comes to importing products, AutoDS offers some pretty streamlined ways to be able to do this. You can either easily import a single product, multiple products, or you can gather all of the information into one CSV file and upload that. This really makes importing your products a lot easier and a lot quicker. So let's quickly go over how you can upload everything as a CSV file. This has to be probably one of the easier ways to do it. Now on my computer, I already have installed the AutoDS Chrome extension. That's this little circle right here. Let's go ahead and click on that. Now here you have a couple of different options. You have extract, delete, and export as CSV. Let's go ahead and click extract. Once we do that, you're going to get a random number here, which is actually the product ID for the listing that you're looking at. Now I like this one. Let's go ahead and look for another product. Let's go ahead and add the microphone I was looking at earlier. Once again, I'm going to click on the little AutoDS extension and open it up and I'm going to hit extract getting the item ID. I'm going to do this once more for one last item and then we're going to see how we can extract it to a csv file to import all of them at once so i'm going to open up my extension once more and click on extract and now i have a total of three different products let's go ahead and export as csv now the csv file is going to go ahead and automatically download let's run over to our platform over at autodes.com and click on add products once we click on add products you're going to see that we have the option for the single product import which means we're only going to import one product or multiple products this is the one that we're going to choose on for now so once that's open the second option you're going to have is upload CSV. All we have to do now is click and drag and drop the CSV file and it's going to start processing it. Once that's done, all that's left to do is click on add as draft and all of our different products that we selected are going to be added to our draft section. Now, once that's done, we can check out the progress of the draft import by simply clicking on drafts. Once we're on there, you're going to see up here, it tells you how many have actually uploaded. And under that, you're going to see the different products that were uploaded. Let's go ahead and quickly click on the microphone so we can edit it. So now here you can optimize all of the different titles, descriptions, pretty much anything you need. Under product, we can go ahead and change the title. We can add it to any collections if we need to on our Shopify store, if that's what we're uploading to. You can also set some unique tags so you can keep track of the item and its sales. You can change the shipping method. Here you have the option for cheapest, cheapest with tracking and fastest with tracking. By default, it is set to cheapest with tracking because that's probably going to be the best option for you. If you choose cheapest, it is going to give you the cheapest possible shipping, but there's a possibility that you're not going to get tracking with it. Aside from that, you have fastest with tracking, which will give you the fastest possible shipping, but the price could be pretty high. Continuing on, you also have the location where the product is located and going to be shipping from, as well as the city. If we click on over to description, you have the entire description that was imported from the products page from our supplier. Here we can go ahead and edit and change whatever we need. Clicking on over to the variants, we have the different variants that the supplier offers. And on this page, one cool thing about it is that you can select all of the different variants and click on edit and enter the selling price that you want everything to sell at. So that way everything updates at once. If you click on over to images, you're going to see all of the different images from the supplier as well. Here you can edit any of them or delete whatever isn't relevant. And then the item specifications, which just gives you some item specifics. Now, once we're done here, all we have to do is click on save and it'll save the draft or we can save an import and it'll go live to our stores within minutes. Now, aside from that, there's also a few different ways to add products. You can just go ahead and click on add products. And let's say we want to add just one here. All we have to do is input the URL of the product and then click on edit. Now that's going to add it to our drafts page. And the process after that is the same thing. You just optimize whatever you need and click to go live. So now now we have our store pretty much entirely set up. What's the next thing that we need to do? We need to start making some sales. But how are we going to do that if people don't really know that our store even exists? Well, we can go ahead and start marketing our stores depending on the type of platform that we went with. So if we have our own website and we're using something like Shopify, Wix or WooCommerce, we can go ahead and start doing some Facebook ads. Whereas if we're selling on a platform such as Etsy, eBay or Facebook Marketplace, we can go ahead and start boosting each listing. Now, when it comes to marketing, the information is a lot. So there's going to be a bit more detail in either the, the article or the cheat sheet that I'm going to provide you all with. Remember that if you want the cheat sheet, all you have to do is go ahead and comment down below hashtag make money plus your takeaway from this video. Now, when it comes to marketing, there are a few options that you can go with. One of the more popular being pay per click ads. For the most part, these are ads that you're going to be seeing on either Facebook or Instagram or boosted listings on places like eBay, where you're going to pay the fee after a customer places their order. We actually have an entire free ebook regarding pay per click ads. So if you want access to that, the link is going to be in the cheat sheet. Another great way to get exposure for either your store or your products is by using influencer marketing. 
marketing. With influencer marketing, you're going to go ahead and speak to an influencer, whether it be on Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, offer them one of your products either for free or at a discount in exchange for either payment or commissions or just a free product. The ultimate goal of this is for the influencer to showcase your product to all of their followers. A few other options you have are creating blog posts, creating social media posts, and email marketing. These options for the most part are for when you have your own website. Now, if you're selling on a marketplace such as eBay, Amazon, or Etsy, each platform is going to have its own method to promote your listings. For the most part, what it's going to be is you pay to have a certain listing boosted and you're either going to pay beforehand or you're going to pay as the listing gets clicks. Now, when it comes to marketing, it really needs a video dedicated specifically for it. So I highly suggest that you get the ebook. It's completely free and all you have to do is check out the link in the cheat sheet. There's tons of information on there for all of the different platforms. So just make sure you check that out. Now, after we start marketing our products and start bringing in some sales with our best sellers, the next thing we have to do is make sure that our orders are fulfilled in in a fairly quick manner. Now, the traditional way of doing this is going to be by placing the order yourself with your supplier as you receive the different orders. So somebody's going to place an order on your website, then you're going to go ahead and take your credit card, log into your supplier's website, place the order and have it shipped to your customer. That's the traditional way of doing it, which is okay when you have a few orders. But when you really start implementing your marketing techniques and start getting more orders, it can start to get pretty time consuming. I mean, think about it. You're going to have maybe 20 different orders with 20 different addresses to ship to. You're going to have to go up and place the order with your supplier each individually for all of those different addresses. While it doesn't sound like a lot of work, it really isn't too much. But once again, once you start getting to the higher quantity orders, when you're placing 15, 20 different orders with a supplier, it can really start to get time consuming. In this case, one of the best things that you can do is start implementing automation. Using a service like automatic order fulfillments from AutoDS is fairly easy. All you have to do is log into your supplier using the AutoDS platform and store the credit card that you want to use for making the purchases. Whenever you receive an order, AutoDS is automatically going to take your supplier credentials, log into to the supplier's website on your behalf and use your payment details to place the order. Once the order is shipped, AutoDS will take that tracking number and update your customer with it. Now, the other option that you have is similar to the automatic orders, but instead it's fulfilled by AutoDS. So what's going to happen in this case is instead of AutoDS placing the order using your account details, it's going to place the order using the AutoDS account details. And then instead of using your banking details or whatever payment details that you provide or that you use, it's going to use a balance that you load directly on the platform. Now, this is extremely helpful because in certain cases, like let's say with e eBay or Amazon, it can help prevent account suspensions or account limitations. And seeing the status of all your orders is also super simple on the platform over at platform.autods.com. You have the orders tab. Once you click on that, you're going to see all of the different orders that have been coming into your store and their status. So as you can see here, this one's shipped and this one's already been delivered. Now, the last tip that I'm going to cover to really start bringing in some sales and making a bit of extra money is providing the best possible customer service. This is an integral part for your dropshipping business and being able to scale. If a customer has a question regarding a product either before or after the purchase, you always want to make sure that you reply back to them in a timely manner and professionally. Make sure that whenever you're talking to them, you're talking to them as a business owner to your customer. You want to be as professional and as accurate as possible. If a customer sends you an email regarding a question for a product that they want to purchase or a product that they already purchased, try to respond back within 24 hours. Anything more than 24 hours, a lot of the times starts to discourage a customer. By that time, they could have either already placed the order somewhere else or looked up a different product and completely lost interest. Even even though dealing with returns and refunds is a hassle and none of us really want to do it, if a customer reaches out to you regarding one, always try to process that as quick as possible. Handling returns and refunds in a timely fashion also helps customers feel more comfortable coming back and making another purchase. As a quick tip, you can always make an FAQ or frequently asked questions page to answer any potential questions that customers might have. In this page, you want to include the more common questions that people ask, like let's say, how long is shipping? How long after I place my order will I get my order? Do you accept returns? Do you accept exchanges? Things like that. It's pretty much just the most common questions that you're going to receive or can think of. You can always update this page as you go along. As you start getting more and more of the same questions, you can start adding them to your frequently asked questions page. So those were our top tips and tricks for starting a profitable dropshipping business. If there's anything that I missed that you think would be helpful, make sure to leave it down in the comments below. I would love to read it and possibly include it in a future video. Also, for any more detailed information on anything that I spoke about in this video, you can go ahead and check out the article that's going to be linked in the description below, or you can go ahead and comment down below. Hashtag make money along with your top takeaway from this video for access to the entirely free cheat sheet. Huge thank you to everyone for watching. Once again, my name is Mario with Out of DS. And if you enjoyed this video and found it informational and helpful, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well as ring that little bell notification and leave a like. As always, I wish you all nothing but the best in your dropshipping businesses and I'll catch you all next time.